Bible talks about that the Spirit of God came like a dove and it landed upon the face, the forehead, or the, the head of Jesus. So notice that. Very plain. Just with Mark 1, 9 through 12, even 11, 9 through 11, you prove right there there's no sprinkling in the Bible. And you could go in all the verses that talks about not only in Mark, there's no sprinkling, little children. Oh, so we're being deceived, aren't we? If you're Catholic, you're being deceived, people. But you know what? Jesus loves you, and he's sharing the truth with you. Let's continue. Hebrews chapter 4. That's almost in the back areas. Let's go to chapter 4, verse 15. It says in Hebrews 4, 15. It says, For we have not... Um, for we have not, pardon me, where am I at? Oh, verse 15, it says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like, what does it say? But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus Christ partook of the same flesh, flesh and blood. He took, he partook of the same thing. He was born of the little, the womb of Mary. So he himself partook of this nature to show us that through the strength of the Father, Jesus was an overcomer through the strength of the Father. As a matter of fact, if you keep on reading the verses, you're gonna see Jesus being tempted. But the Father strengthens him not to sin. He doesn't sin, he's trusting on the Father. Now us, we trust in the Father too. And also, we can trust in Jesus to keep us from sinning. So, he was tempted in all points, yet without sin. No smoking, no drinking, no sin. Whatsoever shape, whatsoever form, Jesus was tempted. Because it's not a sin to be tempted. But when you commit the sin, that's when the sin becomes. Now, um... So when Jesus was baptized, little children, he was baptized as an example. You know what that means? He, he didn't get baptized because of repentance. He wasn't repenting when he sinned. If Jesus would have but sinned just once, he would have not been our Messiah, our Savior. <clears throat> he wouldn't be the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He had to be a spotless Lamb. No sin, nothing, in order to be our Savior, to die because of the broken law. So if Jesus never sinned, he didn't need baptism because of he was a sinner. No, he did it as an example. Jesus left us an example of his life that we should follow his steps. We have to follow the Savior. All right, now let's go to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Same book, chapter 2, verse 14. And it says here, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, we are the children, we are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise, it's talking about Jesus, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. But that is the devil. And deliver them who through fear of death were in all their lifetimes subject to bondage. We are to bondage. We are in bondage to the sin. Yea, that original sin. Yea, that tendency to want to sin. That's our bondage. We, as human beings, partakers of flesh and blood, we are prone to sin. Jesus partook of the same thing, but he never yielded to the temptation. He never sinned. So Jesus came to say, okay, the human race has sinned. Now there has to come a sacrifice, the Lamb of God, which is Jesus. And he had to be our Savior, but he had to be partaking of this human nature. Now Jesus, that means that Jesus cannot be everywhere now. Only one place, like we are, only one place. Only one place. But remember, he sent us the Holy Spirit to comfort us. Pardon me. So we see here, Jesus never sinned. He and he never um, did. He have the tendency. Oh, I want to sin. Yes, he had to. 
but he never yielded to that. The tendency was there, the temptations were there, as they come to us, God is fair, the Father is fair, but Jesus never sinned. Amen. Because if Jesus would have sinned, we would have had no Savior. But now we do have a Savior. Praise God. It says in the next verses, so, and then it says, through death, that's talking about the death on the cross, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. So he came, uh, like it says in Genesis chapter 3, he was going to put a step on the head of that serpent, right? Yes. Let's continue. <clears throat> It says, and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. We are subject to sinning. We are subject to bondage. But Jesus Christ came to die for us. For verily, says in verse 16, for verily he took not in him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. If Jesus would have took the seed of angels, angels don't sin, right? Right now they don't sin. They sin once. They followed the devil, they were lost. But those that repented, Jesus forgave, and now they love the Lord. They don't want nothing to do with the devil. Let's continue. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like to his brethren, that he may be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. If Jesus, our Savior, had sinned, he couldn't make reconciliation between us and the Father. Remember, the Father, uh, we broke the law of the Father. And now we need a mediator, which is Jesus, not Mary. Amen? Not Mary. So, for that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he's able to succor them that are tempted. Jesus knows what it is to be tempted. He lived it, he experienced it, but he yielded not to the temptation. And now he's able to succor us. He's able to help us, aid us when we're in that time. So little children, when you're tempted, what do you to do? Yes, lift up a prayer. Lift up a prayer because without prayer, we don't pray to God. We're going to yield to that sin. Let's continue. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, let's go to verse 23. Let's see how great sin is. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin, because one sin equals death. One sin cherished, one sin will not make us go into the heavenly Canaan, into heaven. We cannot make it. But Jesus, praise the Lord Jesus. It says, notice, but the gift of God. Jesus is the gift of the Father to us as sinners. But the gift of God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's continue 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It's after Romans, to the right. 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, and then we have 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And let's go in verse 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ. Remember, how did Christ have the strength? He had the strength of the Father. The Father God. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Let's go to the next verse. Verse 20. 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin. 21. Jesus became sin for us. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin, Jesus knew no sin. That's the point. That's the focus. Jesus is glorious. He took our nature, but he never sinned. 
when you know sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. In Christ, only in Christ, no sprinkling, little children, no kind of baptism. We got baptism, remember, we put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's like a ceremony or like a service that you do. But it's not on baptism. It's not on the water. It's not in the service. It's in Christ. Let's read that verse again. It says that we might be made the righteous of God in Him. We could only be righteous in Christ. This original sin can be taken away only in Christ. No sprinkling at all. That is very beautiful and clear. So we could know the truth. So yes. Remember, it was immersed, it was not sprinkled. We already talked about that. Matthew chapter 3. Let's talk about repentance. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Matthew is the first book of what, children? The New Testament, chapter 3. And we're going to go to verse 11. It says, oh, I'm in Malachi. And when they were come, wait a minute. I'm in the wrong verse again. 311, it says, I indeed baptize you with water. This is John the Baptist speaking. Here's John the Baptist. I indeed baptize you with water. Unto repentance. <coughs> Let's focus that word repentance. Unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, that's Jesus, the one that comes after him, is mightier than I. See, the Catholic Church wants to put Jesus at a little level. Oh, we do baptize and we're the ones that do get rid of the original sin. But you know, children, that's very evil what they're doing. Very evil. They're taking away the majesty of Jesus. That's not their job. That's Christ's job to remove our sins from our lives, from our characters, from everything. But not the priests. Priests are humans. They're even bonder in bondage of sin too. Look at the newest things for the adults, the evil things that these priests do. And yet they claim to remove that sin. Hmm. Very, very interesting. So in verse 11, But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. John the Baptist says, I'm not even able to take off the shoes of Jesus. He's mightier than I. But this man not only take away the, the shoes of Jesus, they take him away, move Christ out of the side. We're the one that remove original sin with baptism. What a blasphemy. What a wrong thing. What an evil thing, little children. So we know, very, the sacrament is not found in the Word of God at all. Continuing on, it says, um, and I'm not worthy to, um, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. As a matter of fact, when you accept the baptism, it's like the first sprinkling of the Holy Spirit in your life. Now, let me tell you something I haven't told. I'm glad, praise the Lord, I remember. Now, can everyone be baptized? Is baptism what saves you? Because I know a man who was crucified with Jesus, little children in the book of Matthew. Remember, he was crucified. He never was baptized, but he repented. He experienced repentance. And what happened? Jesus says, you're gonna be in paradise. You repented from your sins. And also we are to put them away and what happens? And we can be forgiven. And we can be people who will be going to heaven. We need to, in this earth, we got to fix our lives. we got to be children that obey the Lord. But we have to have the Lord Jesus in our lives. We cannot do it without Him. So, yeah, very interesting. So now we see there, oh, also, so when you get baptized, so you receive the Holy Spirit. But those who don't have a chance to receive the Holy Spirit, what happened? The Lord is still going to pour it to them. They didn't have opportunity. They didn't have the times. There was no way somebody could come and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
then guess what? They're not going to be lost. God is going to have plenty of mercy because God is merciful. He's not an angry judge like the Roman Catholic Church teaches. Let's move on with the next verse. Mark chapter 1 verse 4. Continuing on the subject of repentance. Mark, Matthew, Mark chapter 1 verse 4. It says, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So when you're baptized, you're telling the Lord, Lord, I want you to remove my sins from my life. I want to be your servant and not the servant of the flesh or the devil. Very, very beautiful. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So you see, we need to repent. There's many people who are baptized nowadays. Uh, we can say one thing, that the babies that get baptized in the Roman Catholic Church they never committed any sin, right? They're babies, they don't know anything. But what about us adults? It's not an excuse, I'm just saying. They didn't commit any sin, why do they need baptism? They don't need it. They're not sinners, they don't, they don't even know repentance at that time. They don't know they committed sins. What sins have they committed as a little baby infant? Not that I know, I don't know. So the, the truth is, there's an error. So we need repentance to be baptized. As a matter of fact, if you're in an adulterous relationship and you're going to be baptized, you need to put away that relationship. In a relationship fornicating, somebody who's not responsible, same thing. Whatever sin we have, whether it's open or secret, we need to give it to the Lord. We need to put it away, cut it off. In Christ, we need to ask this and do it and then go ahead and be baptized. Don't go into the watery grave. Remember, the water is a grave. It's a symbol of dying to self, as we're going to keep on looking at here. So, Acts 19, verse 4. Let's go to verse 4 of the Acts, chapter 19. Little children, we ought to know. We ought to know. Let no man deceive you. If you don't know, how are you going to come before God if you're deceived? And God is going to say, oh, you're deceived. But what about those videos you watch? Oh, okay, so we have to accept the truth and receive it into our heart. If it comes from this Bible, take it as doctrine. Amen? Acts 19, verse 4. It says in verse 4, Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Well, not only are we to have repentance, but we are be baptized in Christ Jesus. We know the knowledge of Jesus. Can a baby know about the knowledge of Jesus? When he's such a little baby, how could you share him? You could start doing a little bit, very little, but their brain is so tiny. It's it's just not going to happen. So totally, they're not going to know about Jesus Christ before they're baptized. Okay, now for closing. Oh no, I have one more. Romans 13, 14. After Acts is Romans, we're going to go up to chapter 13, verse 14. And then we're going to close up the study with the book of Romans chapter 6. So Romans 14, uh, pardon me, 13, 14. It says right here, let's go to verse 13, Romans 13, 13, and 14. Let us walk honestly, it's not lying or deceitfulness in Christ Jesus. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. Those are all sins, aren't they? Drunken, that's bad. Wantonness, that's bad, strife and envy. 
But Pucci.